How's it going guys? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. This is the ultimate buyer's guide for Darkest Dungeon. I know getting into this game can feel a little bit inaccessible. I was scared to try it for years and now it's one of my all-time favorites. So hopefully this video can tell you everything you've wanted to know before spending your hard-earned dough. First of all, for people looking to get into the game, really, what is it? Is it going to be something you're going to enjoy? If you are going to buy it, should you buy only the base game, maybe the Legendary Edition, or specific DLCs? Or the Ancestral Edition that comes with everything bundled together? What difficulty setting is appropriate for a first-time player? What should or shouldn't you spend your money on? And if you've already gone that far, how to get yourself started? So we can quickly start with, what is Darkest Dungeon? Darkest Dungeon is a roguelike, turn-based RPG. You assemble a team of four heroes and delve down into a dungeon. You explore along a branching path, making choices along the way, and fighting for survival anytime you encounter any enemies. There are many other considerations to be made throughout each given dungeon. You have to keep your team well fed, keep their sanity up, and avoid disease. The battles themselves are deeply strategic, as are the dungeons. Your in-the-moment decision-making is going to count for a lot, but a significant portion of this game happens outside of the dungeons, managing your team and resources accordingly. This game is hard, it's stressful, there's a lot of different ways you can permanently lose your favorite character or a powerful item. The game is incredibly well made, the art and sound design are top tier, but this game is not for the casual player. It will frustrate you, you probably are going to wig out at some point, and if you're not looking for a challenge, then you really aren't looking for Darkest Dungeon. The game has insane replayability, loads of achievements, and a very active modding community. So if any of what I've outlined sounds remotely interesting, yeah, give it a try. It's one of my all-time favorite games. For any interested new players, or anyone concerned about the game being too hard or too reliant on RNG, please pay special attention to the opening disclaimer from the game. Darkest Dungeon is about making the most of a bad situation. Quests will fail or must be abandoned. Heroes will die, and when they die, they stay dead. Progress auto-saves constantly, so actions are permanent. The game expects a lot out of you. How far will you push your adventurers? How much are you willing to risk in your quest to restore the Hamlet? What will you sacrifice to save the life of your favorite hero? Thankfully, there are always fresh souls arriving on the stagecoach, seeking both adventure and fame in the shadow of the Darkest Dungeon. It may initially appear to simply be warning you that the game is hard. As gamers, we are often bombarded with claims of the next Dark Souls and the hardest game you've ever played. There is a desensitization there. If everything is the hardest, then there's no relative measure anymore. Try to set that line of thinking aside and take the core message here to heart. You should have a plan A, B, and C for any dungeon. Sometimes all the planning in the world still won't save you. Yes, luck is a factor, you're going to have your party wiped, just as often as you pull off a win with all four heroes at death's door. The key to Darkest Dungeon is to capitalize on those successes, take a step back when needed, and try not to put a fist through your screen after an immense failure. This game is strategic, but don't make the mistake of viewing it strictly as a strategy game. That implies that you can craft a no-lose scenario. Instead, don't take decisions lightly, do what you can to mitigate losses, learn from your mistakes, and accept the fact that things are probably still going to go poorly. So you're on board, you're up for a challenge. Do you buy the vanilla base game or the DLC? There should be some monetary considerations, like discounts that come with buying the full packaged game, including the DLC. And if the discount is substantial enough, take advantage of that. One amazing thing this game offers is the ability to quickly and easily toggle DLC on and off. So if the price is right, buy the whole thing, still review this section of the video, and judge for yourself which of the DLC you actually want to turn on and play with. If you're coming into all of this blind and are looking to test the waters, definitely start with just the base game. The DLCs add new mechanics and challenges that will severely test your patience. It can be a blast for experienced players, but may feel unfair when you're still learning the game. It pretty much just becomes too much too quickly, and while this game is already punishing you heavily, you don't need to make that any harder on yourself. Let's run through each DLC in a bit more detail. The Shield Breaker is a safe bet. It is simply a new hero with some new content connected directly to them. There's honestly no real reason to not include this one right away. It's just whether or not you feel like paying for it. If you bought the full edition of the game or a full bundle of the DLC, then yeah, activate the Shield Breaker. 
The Crimson Court has been a generally controversial DLC. It adds a new class, who is mostly worthwhile, the courtyard is a new region, and the districts are a helpful new mechanic. Plus a bunch of new monsters, bosses, and items, that's all good, no one would be upset about that. But it has often been viewed as too hard because of the new need to farm blood as a resource. It takes a game with a steep yet enjoyable learning curve and makes it much more inaccessible for a first try. Your characters can become cursed, spreading that curse throughout your entire roster. It is annoying to manage and difficult to remove. Definitely not recommended for first time players. You should really be familiar with the game's other management considerations first, or else it's just overwhelming. The courtyard is specifically where the Crimson Curse comes from, so you can still activate the flagellant and district buildings safely. If you start out with the curse and the need to farm blood, it can overwhelm your party very early on, and you'll be unable to progress and probably quit in frustration. If you activate it once you're something like 8 to 12 hours in, you probably have enough safety nets in place that even if the curse ravages your team, your file isn't going to be completely lost. Really be careful about activating this one. If you are planning to play with the Crimson Court DLC right from the offset, put off heading into the first courtyard mission until once you've got a team of at least level 2 heroes with upgraded skills and gear and some decent trinkets. You should be able to get through fine with that. However, you could keep postponing it until you build the Sanguine Vintners District, as that makes dealing with the curse so much easier. The Color of Madness is the most recent paid DLC and is notably cheaper than the Crimson Court. As with the others, it can be installed independently. While the Crimson Court expanded the story and lore of the world in a meaningful way, this DLC is more about giving players a new way to pick up and play. It adds new regions that play differently than the rest of the game, more like an alternate mode, facing wave after wave of enemies. It has been criticized as being somewhat repetitive and not encouraging party variety the way the base game does. There are many new trinkets as well as a few new districts. A cool feature here is that once you clear the storyline, as loose as that is, you can return for endless runs without worrying about losing your heroes. They will be out of commission for a brief time, but will not be lost forever. So you've bought the game, you've loaded up the DLC, you know exactly how you want to play, and your final consideration is which difficulty level. Ranging from easiest to hardest, there is Radiant, Darkest, and Stygian difficulties. If you have the Crimson Court DLC installed, Stygian is instead called Blood Moon. Generally, I'm going to recommend the default Darkest mode. That's the medium. Do not pick Stygian if you are new to the game. Many enemies, especially the bosses, can and will wipe your party. Besting them in Stygian is a matter of embarking with a party perfectly built to counter and survive its attacks. You simply cannot do this without knowing what you're getting into, and as a new player, you will not. The game will feel unfair, you will lose, and you will quit. It's specifically made for experienced players only, not simply an added challenge. You can attempt on a second playthrough, but don't think you're a pro gamer who prefers a challenge. The default difficulty is a challenge. Stygian is punishing, and requires very intimate knowledge of the game. Radiant can be a good starting point and is built to take less time than the other difficulties. Campaigns in this game take a long time. I'm talking 30 to 50 plus hours. This is the only difficulty that really feels like a different pace of advancement, so it does very little to prepare you for Stygian. If you really want to invest your time and get the full, brutal experience, throw yourself straight into the darkest difficulty. Radiant should really be reserved for someone who doesn't have the time for that full investment and can't imagine themselves tackling numerous playthroughs. But even if you're only planning one playthrough and want a little bit of a challenge, Darkest is still the way to go. A quick distinguishing factor of the difficulties. If you decide to play on Darkest difficulty, then higher level heroes refuse to go to lower level quests. So a level 3 hero refuses level 1 quests, and a level 5 hero refuses level 3. On Radiant, that restriction is removed, so only level 5 heroes refuse level 1 quests. 
It lets you bail yourself out when you're in a tough spot, but in Darkest Difficulty, it really forces you to mix up your party in fun and interesting new combinations. Especially if you're playing the Crimson Court, on Radiant Difficulty, you could try and take some level 3 and 4 heroes to the Courtyard quest and have a much easier time, but as a general recommendation, I would suggest not relying on overleveling heroes regardless of difficulty. It's going to make the late game difficulty jump significantly more jarring when you can't keep relying on it. A general note regardless of what difficulty you play on, this game was originally an early access title and a few things had major overhauls during development. Some of those changes never sat well with the early adopters, and in an amazingly flexible olive branch from the devs, they made several of these features toggleable, so you can play either iteration to your own preference. The main one of these is whether or not you like the idea of enemy corpses staying on the ground or retreat failure. If corpses stay on the ground, then enemies stay in their specific position. If they go away, then they take over each other's positions as they're defeated. Keep in mind, disabling them does affect the ability to earn at least one achievement for anyone who's eager to try and be a completionist. Okay, that's wild, there's so much there to talk about. But now that you know which DLCs to buy and install and what difficulty you want to start with, great. Now we can have a very detailed breakdown of tips and tricks to vastly improve your darkest dungeon dungeoneering skills. This is actually a companion video. It is being uploaded alongside an ultimate tips and tricks guide for beginners and veterans alike. I'll say beginners, not total newbies. If you've never opened this game before, that video is not going to do you any good. So if you've fully committed to buying it and testing it out for yourself at this stage, please at least go play the tutorial, spend an hour or two learning the basics of the game. I could also recommend a specific video that I think covers the basic mechanics very well, Yub's new player guide to learn the different core mechanics, and once you feel comfortable at least navigating the overworld and moving your party through a dungeon and the basic strategies of encounters, then you'll be ready to take on that video, and it will dramatically increase your overall success rate. I can pretty well guarantee it'll help players of any skill level. So. Don't forget to check that out after you've picked up the game. I just wanted to try something a little different with this video. I love this series, but felt I maybe couldn't do it justice with a full-on review. And what better thing could I do for the game than to maybe encourage new players, bring down any barriers of entry that might exist. Thank you to patrons of the channel. It's due to their support that I'm able to kind of experiment with things on the channel like this. Here's hoping I help someone. I should say there also has been a sequel announced. It's supposed to be coming to Epic Games later on this year. We don't know precisely when. Presumably all these rules about difficulty and what types of games you like will also apply to the sequel, but we can reevaluate once it's released. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.